so <laughs> right like people like yeah okay um make you follow this boring mold and I mean everyone's like oh yeah having a good editor is so important okay I say on the contrary I think editors yeah they are probably the most unuseful people the only people who are useful as editors are maybe like spell checkers just to make sure that you spelled the word correctly and accidentally didn't type the other wrong word for clarity um Hmm. Um, and even, you know, you think about movies and films, right? They're like, oh, the art of editing, you gotta edit down, you gotta edit down. I think you're also trying to follow this procrastinate bed of like a movie theater where it's like a 90 minute film, an hour and a half, two hours maybe, two and a half hours, maybe Marvel's Avenger movie, three hours, got all the kids crying because they can't watch it. Um, I think there would be a lot more benefits to not having things just follow this standardized measure of, you know, like, like even a book, right? It's like a business book, let's say it's around 150 to 200 pages. It's kind of boring or like, um, what thousand word op-ed whenever people have word counts, it's, it's so bad. Like I like the idea that it could be as long, as short as you want, but you know, obviously people want some sort of guidelines. So that's why people do it. But anyways, um, and this is why I never edit my videos. I just one shot it, one shot, one take and just upload it because Okay. Um, the more like professional you kind of try to make it, uh, the worser insofar much as I don't know. Like notions of professionalism are highly overrated, right? Like, uh, like I think what people mean instead to say is like notions of quote quote legitimacy or doing things quote quote well. And the reason why I think this is such a bad idea is that. It restricts us uh, creatively because the real creative artists are kids and children and they have no notion of good taste, grammar, etc. Um, also, when it comes to visual things and art and stuff like that, there are also certain rules of grammar. So I would actually say probably the worst disservice you could do in terms of your personal creativity is go to art school, photography school, cinema school, video school, etc. Because you're essentially taught to follow this boring ass path. Um, and also being a little bit ignorant of history is quite useful. Um, me and my friend Tom Loitard, 85mm.ch, um, he was quite controversial when, you know, he said stuff like street photography is 80% balls and, you know, the... He said how he intentionally didn't study the history of photography to not be clouded. And a lot of people criticize him about that. Yeah. But honestly, I think it's super smart. Like. To be able to do things carte blanche without any bias of the past. I think it's actually a good thing. Like even studying the history of photography, right? The big reason I studied the history of photography was, you know, because so many people would essentially kind of like try to bully me by like, oh, you know, this photographer X, Y, and Z. And they would always name drugs like, oh, this reminds me of Will and Eggleston. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, I feel stupid. So I go home and Google and I'm like, who's this guy, right? So learning from the masters of photography was kind of more of like this like way so I don't get caught with my pants down right especially since I'm a authority on photography and street photography but ultimately what I discovered through you know these quadrillion hours of research and writing and stuff like that is that um Like, I mean, certainly you could do it however you want, right? And, and in fact, actually being able to kill your masters is a good idea because once you start to try to follow, follow standardized notions of, um, you know, success, you're never going to innovate and uh, be creative. Um, and, oh, also the good thing about saying the masters of photography is like to debunk myths, right? Like myth of the decisive moment, just look at his contact sheets of Henri Carter Brisson and see how much he had to work the scene to get the good shot and, you know, other other random stuff. But um, and maybe that's also a via negativa notion or like a Karl Popper falsification notion where um, truly rigorous knowledge is all about disconfirmation and to debunk things as false rather than 
to say what's quote quote true um even with a theology like more robust to say what god is not rather than what god quote quote is um and yeah so maybe also with creativity it's kind of a similar thing is in order to become more creative try to become less discouraged so what's discouraging uh social media likes views and stuff like that even one of the biggest benefits i did with blogging like in the early days of blogging the most depressing thing is you blog something you post something and then you get zero comments and you're watching sure okay um is to get zero comments, zero feedback, and stuff like that. And so that's why I created rsbeta, A-R-S-B-E-T-A.com. Oh, Toto, good in there. Toto, good in there. Toto, good in there. Toto, good in there. And also, even one of my aspirations for my son, Seneca. Okay, Toto, good in there. Good in there. Even one of my aspirations for my son, Seneca, is for him to be, you know, the most uninhibited creative artist person kid of uh, all time um i think modern day society and capitalism consumerism is all about destroying your self-confidence and self-esteem so you know one cannot wear v run five fingers in public why not because it's legal it's just like people look at you weird because they're they're weirded out by the the toes right like you know all these kids who are insecure by yeezys and air jordans essentially it's like Kids who wear streetwear essentially have low self-esteem and socially awkward and will spend hundred bucks on a Supreme t-shirt um, who also owns Vans and North Face and stuff like that um, because they think that in order to feel cool or fit in they have to buy the newest coolest uh, thingies and now uh, this is a trap because it's not actually addressing the real core issue which is lack of self-confidence and also the funny thing too is that like um, the only people I admire are people who like to make stuff and create stuff and it don't matter what your thing is, right? And so somebody who's simply an quote quote art critic and who could just criticize, critique the work of others and not make their own work, to me that is a total cowardly act, I think. Um, just think about the, the chef in Ratatouille who essentially was a failed chef and after he couldn't make it or he didn't he lacked the courage to do it um he just kind of uh gave up similar i trust no photography curator who himself or herself does not take photos themselves um artists etc because to have good taste means uh nothing so my essential takeaway point is you know just make things it's better to make a bunch of bad and cool cool shitty stuff than nothing at all